an in-depth look at pyrite. This is the glittering iron sulphide mineral pyrite, which many of you may know by the synonym fool's gold, something that promises great value but is, in fact, intrinsically worthless. In truth, however, far from being worthless, pyrite played a vital and pivotal role in human evolution. The role of pyrite in firelighting is a common feature of all ancient civilizations and lead on to the development of modern chemical, pharmacological, and armament industries. This video is going to be an extremely in-depth look at the mineral pyrite. The majority of people will have encountered the phrase fool's gold in one form or another, whether it be in the Stone Roses song that was played at the end of Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, or in great literature such as Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice, where the medieval caveat was used to express the notion that shiny and attractive things are not always precious. Despite having been something of a disappointing find when compared with a nugget of pure gold, Within the crystal lattice structure of pyrite, there is in fact actual gold to be found. The two minerals often form together, and some pyrite deposits even contain enough included gold to warrant targeted mining. But in the majority of cases, the gold content is much lower and averages just a few tenths of a percent. Extracting any gold from pyrite is an extremely difficult process, of course. It consists of grinding and heating the composite specimen and then treating it with sodium cyanide. But it is a worthwhile process. Scientists in fact believe that around 24% of the gold on the market is in fact refractory, meaning that it has to be extracted from other minerals, and somewhere between 5% and 10% of the world's total gold production actually derives from pyrite. So, Uncovering fool's gold wasn't quite as disappointing as you might have concluded from historic accounts of disheartened prospectors. Though they appear similar, pyrite and gold each have their own unique properties. Pyrite is brittle and will fracture, whereas gold is ductile and will bend. There are, of course, ways to differentiate between pyrite and gold, as pyrite sits on the Mohs scale between 6 and a 6.5, and pure gold is much softer at only a 2.5, which I find surprises people. The scratch or streak tests are both applicable, assuming that you don't mind a destructive effect on the specimen that you are attempting to identify. If you want to test it without completely devastating it, however, you can of course use an X-ray fluorescence analyzer, which is a piece of equipment that literally none of you have, so vaguely irrelevant. The name pyrite actually derives from the Greek word pyre, which means fire, largely because it emits a spark when struck against a harder material such as iron or flint. It may not be generally appreciated how important pyrite has been when it comes to providing the basics for our current civilization. Predating pivotal points of the development of humankind, such as sanitation, agriculture, or even the wheel, the discovery of fire enabled immediate and drastic progression in our early evolution. Pyrite has quite simply been used to start fires since prehistoric times. In fact, evidence of compact ignition kits have been found on early Homo sapien excavation sites throughout Eurasia. These portable kits comprised of a nodule of pyrite as well as something durable to strike it against also including on occasion dried vegetation matter for tinder and were basically carried around in leather pouches, a bit like prehistoric zippos. Pyrite has also been used in jewellery dating back hundreds of years. Examples of pyrite jewellery have been found in places throughout ancient Greece, Rome, as well as Inca burial sites in northern South America. It was also a popular decorative material in Victorian Britain as well. Pyrite is a highly reflective material, so flat tablets were even polished and used as mirrors on occasion. In terms of where it can be found, pyrite is very widely distributed worldwide and forms under extremely variegated conditions. It can be produced volcanically within molten magma or within hydrothermal solutions and can even form within stalactites. It occurs as an accessory mineral in igneous rocks and within vein deposits alongside quartz and sulphide minerals. Myriads of microscopic pyrite crystals can be found in soils and sediments such as limestone, black shale and even coal. 
Pyrite, which forms in organic rich sediments such as coal and shale, is formed by bacteria and can replace organic materials such as plant debris or shells to create amazing pyritized fossils. As the decaying organic material consumes oxygen and then releases sulfur, pyrite forms as a replacement mineral, creating exact replicas of the ancient sea creature or plant life. More than 90% of the pyrite on Earth is formed from this biological process. Pyrite is composed of iron and sulfur. However, the mineral does not serve as an important source of either of these elements, as there are easier and more lucrative options for obtaining them. Because of the availability of far better sources, pyrite is not generally used as an ore at all. In calcite and quartz veins, pyrite can oxidise to form iron oxides or hydroxides such as limonite. Such oxidised zones are called gossans and appear as autumnal coloured rusty zones at the rock's surface. These gossans can be good drilling targets for gold and other precious and base metals as they are good indicators that there will be other metallic mineralization in the underlying rock. Cuboidal crystals tend to be the most common visible formation of pyrite, with square prisms being more probable than perfect cubes. There are also balls of radiating pyrite crystals forming from a central axis, which are commonly found in limestone and chalk. Pyrite can even form as irregular pentagonal, dodecahedral or octahedral crystals, but these occur less frequently. The most common occurrences of pyrite are as microscopic globular aggregates of individual pyrite spherules. These are known as framboids because under the microscope they look like tiny raspberries. Pyrite framboids with diameters of around 0.01 millimeters are invisible to the naked eye, of course. However, improved microscopy in the early 20th century showed that each individual specimen can contain as many as one million tiny similar sized and shaped pyrite crystals. The abundance and distribution of pyrite framboids is somewhat extraordinary. A reasonable estimate for the total number of framboids on the planet is around 10 billion times the number of grains of sand in the world or about a million times the number of stars in the universe with billions more being formed every second. They are found in rocks and sediments of all ages, but the oldest reported pyrite framboid to be found were found in 2.9 billion year old sediments from South Africa. When pyrite reacts with water and oxygen, it releases sulfuric acid, which can pollute groundwater and cause acid mine drainage, a serious environmental problem across the globe. However, this toxic substance is not without its uses. Sulfuric acid has become one of the most important industrial chemicals and more of it is used each year than any other manufactured chemical. Pyrite continues to be mined worldwide as a major source of sulfur, the basic constituent of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is actually such an important commodity chemical that a nation's industrial strength can actually be measured by its sulfuric acid production. It is used in the chemical industry in the production of detergents, synthetic resins, dyes, pharmaceuticals, petroleum catalysts, insecticides and antifreeze. It is also used in the manufacture of pigments such as paints, enamels and printing ink. The list of applications is extremely long and even includes the production of batteries, cellophane, as well as even explosives. For many years, Spain was the largest producer of pyrite, but today Italy and China are the world's largest producers, followed closely by Russia and Peru. Pyrite is already playing a significant role in frontier areas of science and technology, such as nanotechnology and energy conversion. Several studies are underway to evaluate iron pyrite for application in solar cells for renewable energy. To summarise, pyrite is a remarkable mineral. It's pretty inexpensive, it vaguely resembles gold, it's very indelibly etched into ancient folklore and history, and has dozens of applications within industry and commerce. Buy some pyrite. I can't actually take any credit for this article because it was written and researched by Charlie Forever Dark.